And we are live. Hello, Colin. Mr. Hello, Long. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you think I asked you to do this video? Why are you here? Oh, I think my, my background and my experiences post-DAO have been quite interesting and unique. So I think it's good to share that perspective with people. Absolutely. It is unique and I can't wait to dive into it. I also remember you from class. Uh, how do you think I, how, how do you think you came off as a student sitting in the back row of class? What do oh, you think? Back, back row warrior. It's all back, about row, warrior, back row middle, back row middle. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a uh, super engaged student sometimes, but I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. You can. <laughs> I got decent marks. I mean, that's good, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and definitely, uh, I, I felt like you were engaged, but definitely part of that, the sneaky back in the sense that you, you don't quite know what's going on there, but you always, you know, when called upon or when you had questions, uh, they were right up to date. So you had, you had at least some of us fooled if you were not engaged all the time. So I would give yourself a little bit more credit. Um, all right, so it's, uh, uh, I'm even learning things right before we started the call as to where I thought you were and what I thought you were doing. Um, but hmm, maybe let's start off with what, what's happened since Dal? You are a, in May, April, May, 2020 Dal grad, and you've done a lot in the less than a year. Uh, you are about to write the, uh, the May offering of the CV for CPA, uh, less than a year after you graduated. So what the heck happened? Um, how is that possible? Um, how do you feel about it? And where have you all been since then in the time of COVID? So a lot to throw in. Yeah, maybe, to in. yeah maybe um, we'll, we'll go through it. We'll try linear and then we'll maybe jump around a little bit. So yeah. what did you do immediately after your um, finishing up your classes? Yeah, so immediately after this uh, kind of during this little thing called the pandemic hit. <laughs> so I was living in Halifax and I went back to Toronto. Um, but basically my goal upon graduation was to finish the CPA as quick as possible. I just wanted to get out of the way while it was still fresh, get it over with. Um, so I did the graduate diploma program at Queens over the summer, which was usually in person, but it was online. And I think it's online again this year. Um, so basically that's just like a program that gets the first four modules of the, of the CPA program done. So like core one, core two, assurance and tax. Uh, so I did that for the three let's, months. Let's dive into that a little bit because we do have, I can confirm um, as of a few weeks ago that they are still online uh, for the Queen. So you would have been right when it transitioned to online when they hadn't necessarily been planning too long for it to be online. So in theory, whatever your experience is, um, should be, you know, all that plus enhanced a ton for the students that are going through now. So maybe can you talk a bit about your experience? Like how was the first week? Did you feel well prepared? Did you feel overwhelmed? And how did those feelings kind of progress and continue as you went along the summer? Yep. So um, it's a pretty engaging program online. I'm not sure what Dallas like. I didn't really do a lot of Dow online, but uh... It, it's like the lectures are like live lectures and you have to, they want you to do videos on most of the time. So it's uh it's small, it's, there are two sections of like smaller co cohorts. So even while it's online, you still get to meet a lot of your classmates. About how many people were in your cohorts? Uh, say like 40 or 50 for each one. Gotcha. Um, and it's basically laid out like university classes in that we take five classes throughout the program. One of them lasts the whole time and the other ones are each last, last half the program. So they go quite quick. Um, and I, if I top of my head, it was like, there's a accounting theory class or tax audit, maybe like financial reporting or something. Um, and they, they're basically run quite similarly to university classes, just in a really condensed manner. Um, the tax class, for instance, was like the same textbook that we use at Dow and basically the same course. Um, so yeah, it went pretty smooth, honestly. Great. So uh, a student of mine who went to the Queen's program the year before, um, they had mentioned that because uh, many of the students that were there were from Queens that they felt um, they felt like, oh no, what am I doing here? Should I be here? 
And then it took them a few days to realize, oh wait, like I'm, I'm cool to be here. Was there any similar type of transition period for you or was it smooth pretty much from the, from the get-go? That was quite smooth. I ended up having a good friend uh, at Queens who was doing the program as well. Um, but they're, the program really, uh, the people who run the program are really trying to expand it into other universities. Uh, so I'd say the year last year, I believe, was the biggest year for non-Queen students in the program. I'd say about a third of people were not from Queens. Um, and I imagine it will be quite similar this year. There ended up being, I think, like four or five of us from our accounting class at Dow who ended up doing the program. So it was, they were a good resource to have as well. Absolutely. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. So you wrap up Queens, and that is the equivalent to Core 1, Core 2, and Tax and Insurance um, PEP module electives, and those are done and dusted. So when did you wrap those up? Would that have been about mid-August? Yeah, that sounds about right. So and then what happened? So I, I had this plan before the pandemic, so I was like, all right, sweet. This will end in end of August. Uh, my contract with PwC starts in October. So I'll just go to Europe for a little bit, get my traveling in, do the hostel thing, you know, whatever. Um, so that obviously went on hold. So I just kind of hung out in Ontario, did some fun stuff. Um, and then I ended up letting work know that I, my travel plans were not happening. So I was available. So I ended up starting my work contract early. Oh, nice. Um, so I know a lot of friends are putting people back, but I guess mine needed me for something. So I started early. Um, it never hurts to let them know that you're available if it works for you, right? So yeah, just that's great. Yeah, just is good with any with your firm, obviously. Um, so I guess I can talk a little bit about my work experience maybe now. I think that that would be great because now we know that you're sitting in Toronto at the end of August, having wrapped up your uh, GDIP program. Um, we're going to start work mid-October-ish and then called and said, hey, I'm available. And right now people are thinking, oh, Colin probably works at PwC in Toronto. That would be the logical thing. Colin, what PwC are you referring to? Bermuda. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One, one more time, a little louder for the kids Bermuda, in the back. It's, uh, it's a little island. <laughs> oh, the little island Bermuda. So wait a minute. Is that because, like, how did you get a job there? Is that because you have family there? Is it because, um, you know, extended relationships? Like, how did you first start working with PwC Bermuda? That's a good question. You kind of just walked into it somehow. So basically, um, I did all three co-ops at PwC in Bermuda. And I just saw a listing on my career, I think, for my first co-op. And I know there's a lot of Bermudian students at Dallas so they do target Dalhousie. And uh, I just applied to it and they needed someone. And next thing I knew, I was on a plane to Bermuda. And it was, uh, it was a pretty cool experience. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just so confused. So you're a Dalhousie student from Toronto. And you see an advertisement for PwC Bermuda. And in your mind, you thought, that'd be a pretty fun place to work. You know, big four. Oh, why not? It takes for 10 minutes to apply. You may as well just apply whatever. Yeah. yeah, what do I have to lose? It takes 20 minutes. And then before you knew it, your butt was on a plane and you were going to Bermuda and you came back for all of your work terms. And then you um, you had a contract and an offer for post-graduation. So now you're sitting in Toronto and email them and they're like, yeah, call on. Like we'd love for you to start a couple months early. And so did you have to go back to Bermuda or like how, where, what happened after that? Yeah, so initially I was on a, so immigration to Bermuda is quite difficult if you're not Bermudian. It's a, my situation was quite unique, I would say. Um, so basically my plan post-grad was to go there on a shorter term contract and then come back to Canada for a couple months before May and write the CPA exam and then go down on the full-time deal. Um, but basically with the pandemic and everything, it just became a lot more complicated. So I ended up working remotely from Canada. Um, yeah, so, so working still for the for PwC Bermuda yes. on the clients, but yes. your managers, which is yes. remote. Just remotely, yes, exactly. And, uh, isn't there something about Bermuda when you're living there and working there? Uh, and are we able, we can always edit this out. You can always tell me to edit oh, this no. out later. But are you remunerated in Canadian or American dollars, Colin? 
Yeah, so I'd say the benefits of Bermuda, not only are the good weather, but it's also a compensation thing as well, in that it's a, you get, well, you get paid in Bermudian dollars, but it's, they're pegged one-to-one -one with the U.S. currency. Um, and the real benefit of Bermuda is, A, it's U.S. dollars, and B, there's no taxes. So you can cut your ties with Canada and pay zero income tax. Um, I mean, that sounds good, and it is a really good benefit. But the other thing to note is Bermuda is exceedingly expensive compared to a lot of places. So, yes. so you do kind of pay it back in rent and stuff <laughs> as well. Yeah, it's not it's not all win win. But yeah. hey, you're in Bermuda being paid in um, money that's tied to the U.S. dollar uh, and no taxes if you cut the the ties. And I love how you made that caveat there to kind of cut yeah, the tie definitely back to definitely look back in your tax textbooks and <laughs> if you're going to cut your ties. There's lots of stuff to look at. <laughs> Very secondary tech, tech, tech. No, that's wonderful. And I, what I love is um, so many times, and I had a co-op job and I remember people saying, you know, I was in the elevator and they're like, oh, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm a co-op student. And they're like, oh, who's your father? And I was like, I was really confused because I was like, my dad's Ed. And I didn't really understand because I'm a co-op student. And, you know, um, it turns out that that company I was with doesn't typically hire. Uh, co-op students or interns and it tends to be more of like a family thing or one-off um so you know there's a lot of misconceptions about you know how to call and end up in bermuda or oh that's great for him and his connections but that's not for me but it's quite literally you could be anybody right except you're not you're you you're the person who saw it who took the initiative who made the application and made it happen which is amazing yeah no definitely i would say that just like jumping opportunities like I had no idea that I would be working in this other country like before like so when I started at Dow I was in engineering and I was like first year didn't go that well like really wasn't into it I'm like whatever I'll just switch into business um, and then within a couple of years it kind of sorted itself out quite well absolutely I, I would agree with that especially because uh what if you so that was October or that was uh, end of August. And we are sitting here in March. Uh, so you've been working remotely. Have you been working remotely uh, from your childhood bedroom in Toronto uh, for the where entire, right now, pardon me? <laughs> so that's where I am right now. That's where, so that's where you're right home. now, but is that where you've been um, since August? No, I figured if you're, if, there, if you're gonna work remote, you may as well take advantage of it to the extent you can, right? Um, and for me, being able to travel around is quite important. Um, so I had a lot of friends who stayed in Halifax, who got jobs in Halifax, who are still at school in Halifax. So I just figured I would go back to Halifax for the fall. I found a three month rental. Um, and yeah, so I spent October, November, December in Halifax, so a great time. Nice. Um, yeah. And then an opportunity came up to, uh, spend a few weeks out in, out in BC at Whistler. So I jumped on that too. <laughs> Working Perfect. out there. I had to get up at 5 a.m. every day for work, but beyond that, it was pretty good. <laughs> 5 a.m. Okay, so that, was that um, 9 a.m. in Bermuda? Yeah, because Bermuda's uh, on the same time zone as Halifax. So not too bad. It sounds like you missed out on Europe in the short time, in the short term. But on the flip side of that, you get to spend some more time with your parents. Like I know we joke about like you know in your childhood bedroom, but like I don't know. I boomeranged during articling. And um, I got to say for six months and I like called boomerang, but I loved it because I got driven <laughs> to work. There was coffee, there was food in the fridge. Like it was amazing. So not only are you still able to travel where possible with, you know, coming back to Halifax, seeing your friends and then going out to Whistler and um, are you a skier or a snowboarder? Yeah, I'm pretty into skiing. So it's pretty ideal. Perfect. I mean, you just make the circumstances work for you. And, um, you know, we haven't really talked about your work ethic or, you know, just exactly how you're able to convince, uh, you know, your, your bosses or whatever to allow for this lifestyle. But what I'm going to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that if you do good work and you put value first and you, um, that people will be flexible with you. Is that right. about right? Yeah. And like, don't get me wrong. I wasn't at a list just like skiing every day. Like it was, kind of at the beginning of busy season. So like 
I was working out all the time. Like I'd get out on Sunday sometimes and do some skiing, but it is quite busy sometimes, you know, and you've got to definitely put work first. Completely, completely. Yeah, work first and then not a bad way to blow off some steam, right? Yeah, definitely. Fabulous. So I'm just so curious. Was it your goal was to kind of get through the CPA requirements as quickly as possible, which means that you are now in week seven, I think, of Capstone One? Yeah, I'll do tomorrow. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff to do <laughs> yeah, so part, for anybody here, week seven, um, part three, it's the whole shebang that's due tomorrow. And uh, so thank you so much, Colin, for making time um, for um, this. <laughs> uh, I'm the type of student who does all my work the night before, too. And it's carried me so far, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, okay, I I have like a, um, a meta love for this conversation, and here's why. Uh, so many times students will say to me, oh, well, I'm not like an, um, you know, an A plus student that shows up five minutes early and stays five minutes late and does all the stuff like days and weeks ahead of time. So I, I shouldn't book your office hours or we shouldn't talk or, and I'm just like, why, why? I'm your instructor. Like you are my student. I would love to speak with you. And I'm not here sitting and judging or like creating these false layers of approachability or accessibility. Like that is not cool. I celebrate with the people that are happy to pass an exam and I will commiserate with a student that is upset with their 93%, right? Like I am here um, and not in a place to judge. So I love that you are saying this and hopefully um, selfishly, it will show some of our students or potential students that, you know, education is meant to be accessible and instructors yeah. are meant to be accessible. And I, I definitely utilize you quite a bit my last year i remember we met a couple of times just discussing cpa options after graduation yeah so it kind of helped me out figure out what i wanted to do oh thank you for thank you yeah it's absolutely my pleasure um happy happy to talk happy to talk cpa and just be be a sounding board absolutely um okay so you're are you in audit Okay, so because my next question is going to be how to use accounting in your current gig, but I think the harder question would be how do you not use accounting in your current yeah. gig? <laughs> it's it's surprisingly less based on accounting than you'd expect sometimes. Like um, in my initial experience of work, it's um, really the key thing is actually communication skills and teamwork. Mm. Um, the accounting at the junior level is really not that complicated. It's it's just um, it's a it's a very like a lot of hours and a lot of a lot of teamwork and communication. Can you elaborate a bit more? Um, did you on the communication bit? Did you feel like was it a surprise that it's so much communication and a lot? I don't want to say less technical skills, but like you yeah, what you no. just said is the technical skills are fairly you know there and you know more or less a base level. But the communication skills was that a surprise to you or how did that factor in? Yeah, I, I guess I've been auditing for quite a while now. I did all my co-ops and it's so I've probably been doing it for a year and a half. Um, but I would say that, yeah, I, I guess it is like, I'd say that test my communication skills being fully remote because Bermuda is a lot more relaxed. Like COVID's doing quite well in Bermuda and my whole team's in the office right now. So I'm the only one working remote. Um, but yeah, like the way that accounting firms work is that um, it's quite, you, you move up levels quite quickly um and so you as a say i'm a i'm an experienced associate right now so i'm a second year i already have people underneath me and so you're kind of moving working with people at all levels quite quickly um, and the team i'm on is a quite large team so i'm managing a lot of different people uh expectations above me and below me yeah so one thing when i was in a firm that was a little bit surprising and I heard it first when I was a junior uh, was that the seniors and intermediates would be like crap not only do I have my own work which gets harder because it's more technical I have managers who are asking me about needs from the client and asking me for needs about like how my staff are and then my staff have questions so um, I got a glimpse of it before I actually got thrown into the fire but you have to be really good at time management communication to your staff setting up some boundaries, like showing, hey, I'd love to help you. Let's set up a time every day at four o'clock where we'll go through all of your questions. Or like, if I give you a worksheet to do, hey, how about you do the first couple and then put it aside, I'll review it. And then um, we can talk about it and then go on from there. Because you have to find these like little ways to manage time, manage self, um, kind of uh, 
safeguard against yourself and any poor communication you may have just in case, because you see it one way and you're like, well, the last three files did it this way. Why would you test it any differently? But we only see what we see and we don't see how other people see things. So making sure that we can safeguard against that. So communication is huge and it is not about what's in your head and, and what you know, but how can you get it out there and how can you add value and support your team? So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I think people may be interested in kind of what the work, work culture is like in Bermuda, perhaps. Yeah. So I'd say that it's quite, um, the clients we deal with are actually quite advanced and um, like, like basically how it works is that pretty much most of our clients are all financial services companies. Uh, so I, on my co-op terms, I did eight months on a, a large reinsurance company. And then I did a big so reinsurance. Is that like assurance insurance companies for insurance companies? Yeah, exactly. So if it, a lot of them are based on say like uh, public cat insurance, like cat, like uh, big hurricanes and stuff. So a global insurance company, say like a sorry, an insurance company like that you would interact with day to day, say like State Farm in the U.S. You as an individual would go to State Farm to insure your house, right? And then what State Farm would do is they're like, oh, we have like too much risk with all these different contracts. We're going to bundle together all of our hurricane insurance contracts and we're prepared to pay up to $5 million in losses, but up to $100 million is too much risk for us. So we'll sell some of the risk of the contract basically to an insurance company. And they deal with like huge, huge volumes of money like say like a hurricane will hit the U.S. and they'll pay a billion dollars on it. Yeah. And so that's the company that you are, those are the financial ser and financial services companies, those reinsurance companies that are part of your client base. Yeah, so it's quite interesting. And yeah. then my main client right now, I work on a, a large bank and it's publicly traded uh, on the New York Exchange. So it's quite good in my stage of career to get uh, experience on a public audit. Absolutely. Uh, this isn't planned, um, but I'm just so if people want to um, know more and I'll give you, the, I'll give them the, as much contact information as you'll permit me to at the end. Um, but if people want to contact you because they're like, holy crap, I want to know more about how to work in Bermuda or what the culture is specifically, not necessarily, um, you know, CPA related, but more just like, holy crap, like, how did you get there? Maybe they want to verify, you know, there are natural auditors. They want to trust you and verify. Um, and they want to reach out to you is we have a whole rest of this conversation, but I just want to confirm, like, are you cool with that? Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's really important to um, kind of get back to the university and to uh, as a sports student over again. Like I'd be happy if anyone message me just wants to chat quickly or whatever. Perfect. Because yeah, just for so many reasons, um, already what we've talked about being so many of them queens, fast tracking, um, you know, negotiating a remote uh, circumstance, operating different time zones, uh, you know, big reinsurance companies, publicly listed banks, like this is some fun, fun stuff. Um, so I, I love it. Um, I didn't mean to cut you off though. Did you, okay. so what's kind of the culture like with the clients? You said it's pretty, pretty relaxed considering that they are pretty, pretty big deals. Yeah. Like, by nature, um, as an auditor, you're kind of dealing with people that are above you, like pretty far into the careers, right? So you gotta, you gotta, you build a bit of like a thick skin. You're not really afraid to talk to uh, senior people. But I would say that Bermuda is a really interesting market in that it's very international. Like the my client contact right now is based in like the Channel Islands, so you're always dealing with people in different locations. Uh, I think it's really unique in that. The team you're working with is super international. Like our office is people from everywhere. Like there's a lot of Bermudians. And then uh, my team is like Canadians, British people, South Africans, Americans. Like it's it's really unique that you get to uh, interact with so many people from diverse backgrounds. Absolutely, absolutely. So man, like what are your future plans or options that you're considering? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I, I saw, I'm on a three-year contract um, starting in the summer, so I guess I'll hang out in Bermuda for a bit. Um, 
I have, a, like, I have a lot of friends there and I really enjoy living there so I could be there for a little while. Um, but I think as far as the way I got my co-op job, I'm really open to opportunities and I really don't want to, I don't, I, I don't have any super high expectations, like set expectations for what I want to do, right? Like five years, I could be living in London or New York or Toronto, who knows, like we'll see. Yeah, and I think this came up uh, in an earlier discussion, um, and I really value um, our DAO students and our DAO um, and yourself in particular with working really hard. And um, I'm going to steal this from another YouTuber, uh, increasing the surface area for serendipity, working hard, being good people, treating others uh, the way that you would like to be treated, treating others the way that they would like to be treated, and um, then being open because if we have a very narrow path um, and perhaps it's narrow, not because it's what we want, but because it's what we think we want, or we think it's only these opportunities, you know, we might miss out on wonderful things in London, wonderful things in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, uh, Toronto, right? Like <laughs> it, it, so I love that to work hard, um, enjoy where you're at and then be excited for the future and keep things open. Yeah, like I'm extremely open to the future. Like I don't even know if I want to do accounting in five years. Who knows? Like maybe I'll, I maybe I'll do operations or finance or like, absolutely, we'll absolutely. I see. I love that you said that because accounting yeah. is not like a life sentence. Um, nor it is is it necessarily you know a destiny, right? It can it can be a tool. I often think of accounting like a tool, and it's something that you can um, use in a variety of different ways, and it's a solid solid base. So, like you said, operations, uh, yeah, just so many things. You might be yeah. into investor relations. Uh, you may you know there's just so many things that you can do with it. Yeah, like um, and there's plenty of examples of that. Like even my my dad's an accountant and he used to work at like. Arthur Anderson or a couple of big firms and now for the last like 20 years he's gone like startups and stuff like that which is plenty of like interesting things you can do absolutely uh one of my one of my guests that's coming on in the next couple of weeks um is it works in the music industry right like literally accountants are everywhere and yeah. uh, don't count us out <laughs> oh lovely lovely uh so okay that leads us to what advice do you have for our current Dal accounting majors Maybe their third year, fourth year, perhaps their second year. You know, speak to speak to the Colin of a few years ago, plus the pandemic. Yeah. So yeah. So my answer would definitely involve the pandemic a bit because I would say that the most valuable thing from undergrad is definitely the connections you make. Like I think it's really important that you get to know your classmates really well. Um, I think of like my network uh, from classes and whatnot. Not, not only a help me like in the classes sometimes but also just kind of life in general and afterwards uh, i think it's important i know with the pandemic it's a little more difficult to be in contact with people but uh i mean even if i don't know if you do like breakout readings or anything like that it's always valuable to get to know your classmates quite well yeah we have a, a bi-weekly huddle so every other uh tuesday night laura tammy and i and the fourth year cutting crops meet with our fourth years and in the winter we invited the third years to come and it really is open to any accounting major or any accounting um interested person in becoming an accounting major and we leave it open sometimes we might talk about cpa sometimes we might talk about you know big tests coming up but most times we talk about nothing to do with accounting and it's getting to know each other and we'll often leave after a half hour and it's an open in teams. And so people can talk with each other. They can ask, you know, hey, how's, how's Sam's courses? I heard there's a really big test or, you know, hey, would it be too much to take advanced accounting one and advanced accounting two? Oh no, you're supposed to take them like that if you wanna get through in four years. Oh, okay, I thought maybe it'd be too much and have that advice because it's one thing to hear that from myself and my colleagues. Absolutely, we wanna have those conversations. But many of uh, many of our students are born internal, pardon me, are born auditors inside through and through in the sense that they want to entrust and verify and hear from somebody that's like them or somebody who's just been there where they are, which is why this is so important to me and, and for them. And um, what students have said is they're like, thank you, you know, for connecting us with people who who were me two years ago who i can you know pick from their stories and be inspired so thank you um, for speaking to them and, and telling them to get to know your peers whether it's in the huddle or it's 
you know, you see somebody posting on a discussion board, reach out, you know, reach out and um, never hurts. And there's a possibility we might be back in the fall. So there's that. That would be good. Yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. So fingers and toes are crossed. Um, I, don't think at Santa Fe, so I think she's been in person all year. Yeah, it's it's definitely interesting yeah. how the different schools have have done things, done things differently. And um, yeah, uh, I'm definitely uh, listen. I moved to Halifax to be an in person university instructor, so I cannot cannot wait. <laughs> yeah, even like me, despite making the best of being online, I much prefer like the office is great. Like I like the social aspect of being in the office. I love like Friday happy hours, you know, all, all those, all, all the benefits of the job, you know, I, I find it a lot easier. In that sense. Yeah. Um, hey, are, what's your plans for, for the CP? Do you have a CP study buddy or like, how's that going to work out? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> you have some time and Colin, you are, what did you say? You are uh, like a fourth quarter, <laughs> you have some time. So don't, yeah, and don't I've got I've got like two months of study. So hopefully that goes all right. I've, um, I've registered for a, a, a Densmore course for the, it's like a prep course that they mark some sample exams for you and whatnot. I know that Queens provides some tools that you can use, resources. Um, I, I, I just yeah. want to throw, um, give some unsolicited advice. I, so when I wrote a long, a long, long time ago, uh, I ended up doing remote, uh, I worked with my UFI study buddy remotely. Uh, cause she moved back to Saskatchewan and I was in Alberta and I decided I wanted to study on my own. Like I didn't want to essentially have to, you know, coordinate. Um, and then her UFI study buddy, um, fell through and we decided, I was like, oh, well, if you want to do this and you want to do this remote, we coordinated times when we wrote, then we would email back and forth. We marked each other's and then we would hop on the phone, talk for like a half hour. And then we would go off in our own way and study our own way. Um, I've talked to other students or candidates that um, weren't going to have UFI study buddies or CFI study buddies and then thought, oh, like it's not an all or nothing. We can do like twice a week where we can have some of that. Um, I will tell you that uh, I did a little bit of that during my time and it was definitely helpful, like you said, to go through with somebody to just kind of have that sanity check. Um, two other reasons. One is, you know, as many of the sample practices um, as much sample practice exams that CPA Canada will provide you, you know, what is a, a good solid candidate response look like? There's nothing like learning and growing with somebody and seeing what somebody that's, you know, complementary to myself, maybe with different strengths and weaknesses, how did they approach it and picking up little things, little things, little things, asking them why they did something. And the second reason is it feels fucking amazing to celebrate with somebody when you pass. Like, you have all these emotions and they have all these emotions and it's like that it's like that shared experience of jumping out of um of an airplane together so just something to think about you got lots of time yeah, yeah. and it'd be good to have someone keep me a little bit accountable i've got to really <laughs> focus on studying like i had a time like i don't care how big a test was in university like consolidations whatever i studied the day like I just never studied in advance. So <laughs> you have an angry group of people right now <laughs> that are writing the consolidations exam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Hey, but part of it is like what I love about this, Colin, is that you really prove and epitomize that, you know, having a good attitude, like, and I will say it's not because you're chill that you have a good attitude, in my opinion. That's part of it, and that's part of who you are. But just rolling with it and being like, being able to see something that kind of sucks, and being like, "Well, that's you know, just do your best and do your best." Because yeah. that's how does it work all the time? Like a couple weeks ago before styling was crazy. I was working at like ten o'clock on Sunday night. I'm like, "Oh, well, this sucks," but whatever. Like it'll be over in a week. <laughs> yes. Yeah, perspective, being in it for the long run, not flipping out on somebody because you had a bad day because they're probably having a bad day um, and being the teammate that you want to be on a team with, right? It's huge. Cool. No, I love, love, love that. Thank you. Um, the question that I love asking people because it's unique to each one of us and it's something that can change and should change if people want it to. Uh, what is your definition of success, Colin? Oh, Jared told me this one was coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say it's a very fluid thing. Like I, my definition would change all the time. Like 
Sometimes it's a garage full of Ferraris. Like who knows? Like <laughs> I want to make a lot of money. Maybe. Other times it's um it's jobs where I would have the flexibility to do what I want, some work hours, like work wherever in the world I'd like. Like who knows? Like, I I think I I just approach things in think I like to think of things in like three or four year increments, right? Like think of like a university degree. Just I'll go to Dow for four years, I'll go to PwC for four years, maybe longer, who knows? Do something else. I think that you just gotta, my, um, for me personally, I try to just jump on as many opportunities as I can and whatever sounds good, just do it. It'll be an experience, right? It will be an experience. And it almost sounds like part of your definition of success is, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's looking far enough into the future that you have something to aim at, but not so far that it's limiting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm kind of like scared of limiting. I <laughs> like I feel like with the pandemic and everything, like I just want to like be 25 forever and do whatever I want, right? <laughs> I so mean <laughs> I have no interest in like settling down and like doing whatever. Like I just want to keep uh just chasing opportunities. I don't know. Yeah. No, I agree that um for myself personally, I can relate that a fluid definition of success is uh is a is a very valid one to have and uh keeps us open and flexible for for cool things to come and it sounds like you're having fun along the way right yeah definitely i'll have more fun once the cpa is over but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, that, that <laughs> yes that is uh although some people do here's a warning for you um of my colleagues it we kind of joke that oh I thought he would have so much time when CPA is done. And then I'm like, well, what did you fill it with? And they're like, work. <laughs> so. yeah, well, I'll be a and I'll just be here, but whatever. <laughs> no, I know, I know. It's just, uh, and then what did I do? I started teaching in the program. So yeah. good. Nothing, you know, nothing bad. It's just funny, right? Um, but it's also a choice and um, one that I'm really privileged um, to be able to make. So it's just funny. Uh, okay, uh, Colin, this is been Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so, so much for being generous with your time. Do you have any final comments or anything else to add before we wrap up? Uh, nothing of note. Thanks for uh, organizing this. And I, I guess, again, as we mentioned earlier, I'd be happy to field any additional questions from anyone if they want to get in contact with me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, contact information uh, will be linked down below. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping you reach out. Colin's nice and approachable and he doesn't BS. You will hear the answers uh, yeah, from no, him and none of this is scripted or planned <laughs> and uh, nor censored nor edited. So yeah, reach out. Perfect. Thanks, Colin. Yeah, we'll keep in touch. I'm sure. Let me know. After yeah, this. no, I'm looking forward to it.